adventure. Today, we get to work with one of my favorite special art concepts, which is natural design. Now, first, we'll draw a pile of wood and a natural design on the wood grain on the side of the pile, and then we'll draw a bar and a fence to further show you how important natural design is in making your drawings more realistic. Now, Meta Man's here with an activity that you're really going to like. Now, I've asked him to show you how to create three-dimensional airplanes and a helicopter. Now, I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, and so Meta Man will tell you how easy it is to join. Now, here's what you need to follow along. You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, make sure it's sharp, and your activity notebook so you can make notes on how to make 3D aircraft. Now, you gather those materials together, and I'll be right back. So you're all pumped up, right? You're in a good mood, right? Oh, come on, you can be more enthusiastic than that. Shake out all those kinks in your hand, and let's conquer this piece of paper and draw three-dimensional drawings. Now, we're using that word natural design here on the pile of wood. We're drawing some wood grain and also some grass on the side, and also a barn using wood grain again on the slats using natural design. Let's start here. Loosen your hands up again. Make sure you're ready to command this flat piece of paper. Let's start with a guideline going up in direction 7. Turn the corner and draw a guideline going in direction 1. Now this will be where two logs are facing, going across on the paper. Draw the foreshortened circle right here. And then space the other log apart a little bit and draw another foreshortened circle about right here. See how the tops line up in direction 7 also? And then using that magic word size, the logs are thicker at this end and they get smaller as they go further away in the picture, as they get a further away from your eye. And so you kind of slant this line so see they eventually come across to a, a vanishing point out here in the background. Really light lines. Then draw the curve right here. Another, let's draw one log on top, resting on top of these two. Another foreshortened circle. And then make it get smaller as it goes away from your eye. It's a bigger log than these two, isn't it? And natural designs used right here on the end. I'll darken the end right here. And let's put a crack right here on the side of the log. Logs are fun because you can put little cracks and you can make nooks and little crannies and you can draw the grain, the wood grain going along like this. And then draw the cracks in the wood from when the people cut down the trees. And then draw some wood grain again, the rings in the trees. Now that's how you can tell how old the tree is, huh? And then draw the lines going through the center and make it a long crack going down the bottom right here. And then another set of lines representing how old the tree is. And let's put another log slanting up, leaning against this pile of logs. Draw a four shortened circle right here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Make it about that big. And then aim and slant it right up against this top log right here. Kind of a jagged line. And then a light top line because I'm going to make another branch offshoot off the top right here. See it tapers down and gets smaller and smaller. And then curve the end right here. And I'm going to make the end of the log splitting just a bit to make it a little more interesting for your eye. See, add little extras like this. You can add a split down the, the side right here. See it comes down about right there. And then I'll bring it back to the end, curve it around, and then draw the thickness of the inside of that log coming down. See that vertical line? See how the log kind of splits apart right there? It's pretty neat what you can do with your drawings, huh? You can add these little extras, you can split it apart, or you can make a branch coming out with some leaves on it. Let's do that. Let's make a branch slanting off the top. See, it tapers. Remember that magic special art word, tapering? Taper it again. I'm going to bend this and just make one step coming here. And see, it branches off into little tiny thin stems. And then you draw little twigs out here with leaves on each end of the twig. Makes a little interesting natural design, huh? So you can find natural design in leaves. You can find natural design in stone or in bricks. You can find natural design on the side of houses or the side of trees. Along stone pathways. 
The batting is trading, nice and dark, underneath where this log is leaning against it. Now here's a trick to outline your shadow to make sure that this log looks like it's really resting on top of these logs. Curve the shadow around like that, curve the shadow around, and darken in really dark where that curve meets. See now, that really makes that log look like it's really resting against that pile. And then now, use your natural design of the grain of the wood from dark to light as it moves up. Put some little bit of texture in there, little scribble lines. Nice and dark down here and lighter as it comes up toward the top. Put some texture in there to represent the bark and the gnarly little grain that goes down the side of the bark. Dark right here and it gets lighter. You can even use your finger underneath here also. Now let's draw that barn back here. Draw a vertical line. And all these pile of logs will be up against the next to the next to the barn. The roof will be off the picture. Slant it off in direction one. Direction one, then draw the back of the barn. Direction seven. And you barely see the side of the barn door over here. And if you have room on your paper, you can draw some logs on the other side of the barn too. Now I'll draw the barn door, a vertical line, direction seven, a vertical line right here. Now barn doors are interesting. You can either draw a vertical line down here and put your supports or your design, a little bit more natural design on the side of the barn right here. Or you can just draw the big X right in the middle. And then I'll add a shading across the whole side of the barn. You can use your finger and blend it all in because the main point of this drawing is the locks using natural design here on the grain at the end all along here like that. Now take a look at this painting of a fine artist, Corot, and see how many examples of natural designs you can spot in this village. <laughs> Visit your local art museum, your library, or your school library. Get lots of ideas for your drawings. Now, use the back of that piece of paper, and let's draw some logs going in the opposite direction using natural design again. Draw a foreshortened circle right here. We'll just draw one log going in this direction. Draw it getting smaller as it goes back in direction seven. Curve the end right here. And watch this. This guideline. This time I'll put three across, three foreshortened circles. Line them up. Before I do that, I'll draw the top four short and circle to represent these two. And see, you can pile these up as high as you want. And then we'll put some cracks and some bark on the side of these logs. Plant another log. Pull right on top of there. A little log that was just thrown by the person who's cutting the wood. You can make this one an interesting shape. And another four short and circle. And I see you see a whole different angle when you draw logs in different directions. You see this end with the natural design. You see the age of the tree up with the lines of the grain of the wood. I'll darken it in the outside. Maybe add a little bit of shading to this side and blend it in. And let's draw a branch coming out from right here. This time I'll make it a little bit bigger. It almost looks like it's a tree growing out of the tree, doesn't it? You can do all these little designs here. Make a split coming down the tree again. Another split here and even some marks where the ax hit the tree right here. Use natural design on the side. Use scribble shading here to represent a really loose texture, really nice for your eye. And in the back of the logs, you can stretch them out as long as you want, going off in direction seven. I'll just, I think I'll see the peekaboo log about right here, and see that end right there, and then see the end about right there. You see, nice and loose and sketchy, and go ahead and shade underneath this one, underneath this one, underneath this one, and inside it's really dark. You can barely even see the detail in there because it's inside of the pile. A little bit darker here and a little bit darker here. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing about 20 or 30 minutes a day. And a super important artwork to keep in your mind is natural design. <laughs>
Cindy? Cindy, where, where are you, Cindy? Cindy the dragon is missing. I need her for my activity. Oh, she's so excitable these days. She knows that everyone is drawing a picture of her. The commander made her the club activity. He wants all the new club members to draw what they think Cindy the dragon looks like. If you're not a member yet, send Cindy the dragon to the commander. Here's one example of a very nice drawing by a club member. This is what Roland thinks Cindy the Dragon looks like. Send your ideas to Secret City Club, Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556. Hmm. I like aeronautics. That's the, that's the study of how planes fly. I like to think about the design of the wingspan and the weight and the balance of the plane. Now, I'm not interested in how a plane that I might design uh, to fly in. I mean, I'm not really interested in that kind of a, of a design. What I'm interested in is a paper plane design. Yes. I'm sure we've all at one time or another folded paper and tried to make it fly. And sometimes the plane was successful and sometimes it wasn't. <laughs> Here is a design that I want to share with you. This design is a very easy way to fold paper and make your paper planes fly very well. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me show you how to fold this particular plane. Take a plain sheet of paper and fold the top end, oh, about two inches from the bottom. Now, it really helps to be neat with this so all of your creases are, are clean. And then fold the top over to meet the other corner here. sort of pie shape or pyramid shape. And then what we're going to do is take the very top point here and fold it right to the end of our double line of paper. And then fold the entire thing in half. two wings, but we need sort of a, the body or the cockpit of the plane. So what I like to do is carefully fold a small little crease right in the middle half there. And I make that crease a little bit stronger by just folding it back and forth. And there I have my plane. Good wingspan and all the weight is in front. And if I carefully hold my fingers in the back, and begin to shoot, it flies very well. And you can take your plane, and you can even design uh, different kinds of things on it. Put numbers on it. You can even put windows. In fact, if you put big windows on it, it makes the entire plane look a little smaller. And if you put small windows on it, it makes the entire plane look larger. Let's see what Elmo has to show us about size. mastered your airplane, what well, might, might be fun is to try a helicopter. Now, my helicopters look something like this, and they're really easy to do, and they're a lot of fun because, watch carefully as I throw this up in the air, watch what happens. It twirls all the way around. <laughs> yes. Now, they're easy to do. Simply take a strip of paper and carefully 
cut oh, almost halfway down. And then what you do is you begin to fold the other end until it meets the part that you've cut. Now you can glue this part right here and while it's gluing you could even keep it in place with a paper clip. Now I have several helicopters that I've glued already and they've dried. And I want to show you how neat they look as they fly to the ground. I'm going to get on this stool over here and I'm going to begin to make my helicopters fly. As you can see, no matter which way I fold them, they begin to twirl around. And the higher I go, the better they will fly. Now they're easy to make, and they look really nice if you have them in multi-colors, and you and your friends can fly them all at the same time and fill the entire air with whirling colors of helicopters. Planes or helicopters, try your own design. They're a lot of fun. I have some really neat drawings to show you in the Secret City Gallery today. Now these are the designs of what the club members thought Cindy the Dragon looks like. Now have you done your design yet? Well make sure you do it and do a nice detailed dragon using all the magic words of drawing. Now let's look at this drawing right here. Look at Cindy the Dragon nice and colored in. You see the overlapping? Now this is done by Betsy Jablonski. You see the gloves, the green hands. She thought Cindy the Dragon was a pink dragon just wearing green gloves. And you can see Commander Mark behind the easel right there. Cindy the Dragon looks huge in this picture. <laughs> this is a really nice drawing. Good job, Betsy. Let's look at another drawing right here. This is done by Sharon Kim. Look at, she thinks Cindy the Dragon wears these green furry arms, but it's really almost like a mermaid picture. Isn't that beautiful? The eyes and the nose and the mouth. She says lots of surface and size in this drawing. You have your secret city out, right? You have your sketch pad open up and you have your paper where your secret city started. Well, let's add a stone pathway to your secret city. We'll use natural design. Now, you know, natural design is used on the side of a building, like a brick building. The brick pattern is really a nice design or stones on the side of a building. Natural design is really fun to add to your drawings. I penciled in a nice pathway on my secret city. I'm adding on the planetscape a pathway winding around and it goes down into the underground, loops around, and goes into a stalactite. Kind of a neat idea, huh? So you get all these ideas from looking at artwork around you and looking at all the designs and nature around you. I'm going to add little stones right here, like cobblestones, on a bridge. The bridge will go up over the water right here. But I'll add the, the stones back here and add the near ones right here. Just, just almost like four shortened circles added right here. And then I'll add shading to make them look like little three-dimensional stones. Nice design, isn't it? See, I'm following the pencil sketch, my S-curve line right here. And I make the sharp corner. You can put as many as you want. I'm going to make the stones get a little bit bigger as they come toward me. See how big they, they finally almost take up the whole road, huh? See how thick that is? A really interesting design. It's a good practice for four shortened circles, isn't it? Now I changed direction. Now we're starting, we're coming around the corner here, we're on the planetscape, and now we're going downhill a little bit down toward the under planet. So let me take my pen here and draw some of these rocks going down toward the under planet. And then the stones are changing direction again. They're going across the face of the stalactite. Now they're only about two wide. I'll put it, make them three wide right here. Now they're turning direction again. They're going into a tunnel into the stalactite and then well, I will draw the grass right here on the overhang to separate the planetscape with the under planet take my paint I'll get nice and dark between the little grass tuft and the underground stalactite along here and then take my paint and shade nice and dark inside the tunnel here area See, this is a really interesting way to separate the two planets just with a thin grass line. See, I followed the grass line along the planetscape and also to the waterfall, and it goes down along over into the tube. Hi, Cindy. Wow, this is great. This is really an airplane. Did you fold this? Oh, Minuteman helped you fold it. 
Oh, I think it's a good airplane anyways. You know what? I bet the Unibear Island would love to see you flying along this inside the mural. <laughs> Are you gonna get inside and fly through the mural? <laughs> Are you, gonna, you can draw on the outside of it, windows and doorways and all kinds of neat things. And you know what? If it doesn't seem like it's heavy enough in the front, the Mega Man tell you you can put a paper clip in front and throw it so it kind of can do loops and loops. <laughs> and you know what? If you take the, can I do something to your plane right here? You want to make it a trick airplane? <laughs> Look at this. If you take the back and you put a fin right here on the back of this plane, see how you fold it up? Mm -hmm. Look at this. You fold this up right here and you have like tail fins, so if you throw it, it does loop the loops. <laughs> like that? <laughs> you want to sit and watch me finish my rocks and my natural design? See, I'm drawing some darkness underneath the overhang of the grass to make it look a little more like natural design, like the grass is really drooping over. Yeah, I'll continue it over on the other side right here. See, I'm drooping it down, and then I'll continue the shading. And now how about putting a little bit of texture on the stones to make them look more natural? Does that sound like a plan? Okay. Well, I'm going to show you the left side scribble technique. Nice and dark in between each stone. Dark oh. over here. Bye-bye, oh. oh. Cindy. All along the stone pathway. Adding the shading on the left side underneath here to make the stones look a little more three-dimensional. Like they're actually popping up off the ground like cobblestones do. Have you ever seen a cobblestone driveway or a cobblestone pathway? Well, that's a really good example of natural design. See all the rocks in a the pattern, they make a nice design for your eye to look at. That's what these art words do. They are like desserts for your eye. They make your drawings better tasting to your eye. But you never heard someone think that you can actually taste drawings with your eyes, huh? <laughs> well, you can. These art words help the drawings taste better and look better, too. Are you keeping up with me with the stone pathway? You can draw an S-curve and then draw stones. Nice pattern coming down the S-curve in your secret city. I'm going to continue shading the left side all along here. I'll take my darker pen and separate the stones with a little bit of blackness between each stone. You can see what happens with the design. You see what happens there? It makes the white part of the stones really jump out and it highlights them a little bit more if you add the darkness between each stone. Along here. Since I've done the cross hatching on these stalactites, I'll continue the cross hatching down, even inside the doorway. More cross hatching along right here. All along the side. Now I'll go the opposite way. See what happens? It makes that overhang really present. Like it's really hanging there. Now you can use this to style and this design on the side of barns or your house or any kind of inhabitants Excuse you want to create. Excuse me, Commander Mark. Man, man. Have you seen Cindy? Well, yeah, she just brought in that really neat airplane. And I showed her how, you know, you, the airplane you and Cindy designed. Wait right? a minute. I didn't, I didn't work with Cindy on any airplane. She was supposed to help me with my activity, and then she didn't show up. Well, you know what she did? She, she probably just having fun. She probably borrowed one of your airplanes. Oh, but I... you know what I did? Don't get surprised, because I made the back fins of the airplane pop up. I showed her how to do that aerodynamic design on them. Oh, that's a very good idea. You don't mind that I ripped your plane? Oh, though. not at all. Okay. I'm always trying to change my design to make my planes work a little bit better. In fact, I want Cindy's help, because she's so large, she really helps to make my planes soar when she <laughs> lets them go. She just drops them like she she's sure does. a mile high, huh? Well, if you see her, tell her I'm looking for her, okay? I'll do that. All see right. you later, Man. Man, has got the right idea. Always changing things to make them a little more interesting, a little more fun. Inventing new projects. Adding the cross hatching. In fact, I'm going to take my dark pin and even get in here even darker. And then I'll add, oh, I want to continue this down. I think I'll just have the stalactite come right off the end of this pathway. See how it curves around? I'll go ahead and draw a doorway right here. And then some more grass, tufts drooping. Get a darker pan here. That works a little bit better. And then I'll have the stalactite come down. And the stalactite come down again. And look at that. It just comes straight down off the pathway. And you can continue to design around here. I think I'll work on this stalactite right here instead of going over in this area. Nice and dark underneath. And you can add grass tufts. You could add different nooks and crannies and designs on the side of your mountains or stalactites or any formations you have in your secret city. I'm going to 
cross touch all the way along here, like that. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing about, what, 20 or 30 minutes a day and stay in a super positive attitude. I'll see you next time. <laughs>